After our last video, our budget spreadsheet not only looks great, but it also adds up all our expense categories. In this video, we reference that calculation and use it to finish our budget. Click on cell C6, that's the one right under total expenses. We want to use this cell to show the same result as the calculation at the bottom. We could enter another sum function and recalculate it, but there is a better way. With references, with C6 still selected, type the equal sign and click on the calculation from cell J38. It shows up as equals J38. What J equals 38 means is that C6 has referenced that cell and will return the exact same value. Hit the return key on your keyboard and see for yourself. Now we want to know how much of our income is left after savings. For that we need an income in the white box. I'm going to type something inside my income, say 1200 bucks. To find out how much money is left over, we need to take our income and subtract our savings. Doing this is very similar to the adding a sum function. Click on cell C8, type the equal sign, then click on our income box. When you click, you'll see C4 automatically typed in the box for you. Now we need to subtract expenses, so we type a negative sign and click on the expenses cell. And just like that, you see how much money you've saved. Wait a second, the number's negative. That means that we're spending more than we're earning. Let's get a better job, say one that makes $2,900. Much better, now we have some money for savings. The last set of calculations we will add is for the amount of each savings category. Click on the first cell there. We need to calculate what amount 40% of our total savings is. Type the equal symbol and then click on the 40% cell. To multiply, we use the asterisk key. That's the shift eight character. Now click on the total savings cell, and just like that, it's calculated the correct amount. Now, if we had a ton of cells, doing this for each one could take a very long time. Luckily, there's a shortcut for this situation. Since each cell will be the percentage multiplied by savings, we can repeat the pattern by clicking on the bottom corner box and dragging down. Uh-oh, it didn't seem to work for those other cells. There's a reason for this. Click on the cell H5 to see what happened. By clicking on the formula bar, it highlights the cells that the formula is using to make its calculations. It got the 25% cell right, but not the saving cell. And this makes sense why it didn't do it, because the relative pattern is to take each cell below the next, and that's just what it did. This is because the function was only using relative references. So how do you absolutely lock in total savings so that when we drag down, only that cell remains static? The answer is absolute referencing. Let's edit that formula we just made. C8 is our total savings, and we want to make that absolute so that it doesn't change when we drag it down. To do that, we place a dollar symbol before the C and one before the eight. The first dollar sign locks the column, and the second dollar sign locks the row. With both dollar signs, we are guaranteed that when we drag down, the spreadsheet will correctly reference that cell. Perfect. Try experimenting with different uses of absolute and relative references. Play around with using just one dollar sign or both, or in different places, to see what happens. Once you've done that, I'll see you in the next video.